Hello everyone and welcome to my math lesson for today. My name is Miss B and I am so excited to be able to jump into another math lesson with you all. So hopefully wherever you are, you are ready to take on this lesson with a good attitude and just know that it will help you as you continue on your learning journey and it will really help you um, as far as figuring out addition and subtraction and um, we'll just help you as you go along. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to share my screen with you so you guys can see what is happening and follow along with me. All right, so today I am going to be teaching you guys a lesson um, called Finding Doubles in Addition. And right now, that might seem a little bit confusing, just the title, but don't worry, we are going to get into it. And I truly believe that this lesson will make sense to you and help you. All right, so before we actually get into the lesson, we are going to talk about our standard and our objective. The reason why I like to go over this is because when we do, you know exactly what you should be able to do and be able to learn, and you also know what you're supposed to be learning. So our objective is what you should be learning, and it says by the end of this lesson, you will be able to use the strategy of making doubles to help simplify addition. And so we'll check back in with that at the end and see how you guys feel. Um, hopefully you guys will feel like we have used that and really um, been able to get to know how to do it. So then we have our standard and our standard is to fluently add and subtract within 100 using strategies based on place value, properties of operations, and or the relationship between addition and subtraction. So again, what I'm teaching you today, this is just one strategy that will help you in addition and subtraction. Um, we're mostly going to be focusing on addition today, but I did also want to note that I know we are working within 100 just as kind of a team. We will not be going over 100, but if you guys feel ready and you feel comfortable with the material, you guys can feel free to use larger numbers if you feel like this is too easy for you um, during independent practice. So with all that being said, now that you guys kind of know what is going on, let's jump on in. All right, so for materials, you guys can use a paper and pencil, any kind of paper, and honestly, any kind of writing utensil you want is just fine. Um, I put pencil on there, but you can use a marker or a colored pencil or whatever you feel comfortable with, um, feel comfortable doing math with. And then the other option is if you don't wanna use paper and pencil and you have a whiteboard available, you can use a whiteboard. This is what I will be using. I always like to have a couple different colors um, so I can work with different colors while I write, but I like to write with a personal whiteboard. Um, and the final option is to grab an electronic tablet. If you do have a tablet, it should be one where you can write and take notes um, or else that will not work. So if you have a tablet that can do that, awesome. If you don't, please stick to a whiteboard or just paper and pencil. Those will be your best options and just make it the easiest for you to be set up for success. All right, so this is the time when you can pause this and grab those materials. Okay, hopefully you guys have grabbed those materials and you feel all ready and set to go. Um, now we are going to jump on into the lesson and let's go ahead and get started. All right, so here's our example problem that we are going to start out with. It is five plus six. Adding doubles, adding by doubles can often help us solve math problems easier. So when you're looking at the problem five plus six, how can we simplify that? What do you guys think I mean when I say making doubles? What do you think this strategy is? Maybe you have learned about this before, maybe you haven't. 
just take a guess in your head and think, what could I mean by making doubles? Hmm. Just take a second. You don't need to write it down. Maybe share it with someone, um, someone next to you, or you can just say it out loud. All right, so the process of making doubles might sound really scary and confusing, but it is actually really easy and will help you so much as you um, are adding and subtracting. So I'm going to take our example problem, which is five plus six, and I'm going to stop sharing my screen so you guys can see what is going on on my whiteboard. And I'm just gonna write that on my whiteboard and show you how we make doubles. All right, so I have five plus six. Amazing. I know that the number six is larger than the number five. So I'm gonna look at this and see how can I decompose this number? When I see six, I also see one and five. So one thing that I can do here by looking at these numbers is I can see, oh wait, look, these, this is a double. These are two of the same number. So I can add five plus five, which the answer should quickly come to your head. And if it doesn't, that's okay. It is something we will work towards. So the answer comes to my head and I know it's 10. Well, then we still have this one left over. So then we just add our one and we get 11 for our final answer. But just walking how, through how we did that quickly is we kind of decomposed this larger number and we saw, look, these are doubles. This is the same number twice. So why don't we practice adding that number together and then just adding what's left over? Because five plus six may not come naturally to you. Your mental math might not be that fast, so it might just not um, come to you right away. But five plus five, we can probably think of, even if not very quickly, quicker than we could think of five plus six. So if you start by just doing five plus five and then adding on that one, just adding on the one is a piece of cake. Um, we know 10 plus one is 11. And that not only gives us the correct answer, but it gives us a great way to solve the problem um, using information that we already know. So hopefully that makes sense to you guys. And you know that five plus six is 11. And as you practice with this method, with this strategy, it's so helpful and um, it can also help you with your memorization. You can actually start to memorize, oh, I know five plus six, that's 11. And maybe you didn't know that before. So this is just a really great practice strategy. All right, let's move on to the next slide. We will check out what we have done here. So we know this is 11. I'm gonna write it so that we have it in here. Proud, awesome, great. So now I'm going to do the top one and then the second one, let's do that together. So again, I'm going to stop sharing my screen, but first get a preview of these questions. Take a look. It is 13 plus 11 and seven plus six. So first, let's only worry about 13 plus 11. All right, so 13 plus 11. I'm going to write that on my whiteboard. 13 plus 11. Awesome. So there are actually a couple of different ways that you guys can make doubles in this case. Um, if you feel really comfortable with, let's say, your 11s, you could use the 11. But let's say that you're not feeling so comfortable with knowing maybe 11 plus 11. There is another way. We can decompose both numbers. So we have 3 and 10 for 13, right? Because 3 plus 10 equals 13. 
And for 11, we have 10 and one. And we know that's correct because 10 plus one equals 11. So as you can see, this is how they look decomposed. The first way we can do this is just do 10 plus 10. 10 plus 10 equals 20. That's where our adding doubles comes in. And it's very helpful. So I'm going to change, um, I'm going to change up my colors so you guys can see my process here. So we did um, 10 plus 10. So now let's look, we got 20. So let's do um, 20 plus three, because we have the three over here, we can cross that out and make what's 20 plus three? 23. Awesome. And now all we need to do is, whoops, take our 23 down here. And we have our one left. So let's add on our one. And we get what's 23 plus one? 24. I should have changed my color for that last um, little part of the problem, but that is okay. You can see how we got 24 by decomposing both numbers. Now there is another way to do this that I want to show you underneath um, so you guys can see. So we are going to take the same problem, 13 plus 11. Awesome. And this time I'm feeling like, you know what? I'm really confident with my 11s. I feel like I would know um, the doubles, like 11 plus 11. So I'm not going to decompose that. What I am going to do is decompose my 13. So I will make a two and an 11. And we know that that is correct because 11 plus two equals 13. Perfect. So here we go. For this one, all I have to do is do oh, 11 plus 11, which I know that that is 22. And then I'm going to take another color here and do, okay, I have 22. So I did 11 and 11. And I only have this two left. So I'm going to add on my two. And what is 22 plus two? 24, awesome, awesome job. Yes, the answer is 24. And as you can see with both problems, we got the same answer. There were just two ways to get there. And honestly, there are a lot of different ways um, to get there, but these are probably the two most common ways to get there. Um, I personally prefer this way because there are less steps and I am familiar with doubling these 11s. But if you feel like you would not think of 11 plus 11 just right off the top of your head, doing 10 plus 10 is also a great solution. Just make sure that you are writing down your work so that you don't get mixed up in what um, math you have already completed. So you don't lose track of where you are in your steps. All right, let's go ahead and erase our boards and I will tell you guys what the next problem is. Okay, so. Awesome. So our next problem is going to be, we solved that 13 plus 11, and we know that that is 24. Now we have seven plus six. This one is a little bit simpler because the numbers are smaller. So you guys will probably be a little bit more familiar with the doubles here. So we can do it like this. We know that seven is a larger number than six. So let's go ahead and decompose our seven to one and six. And we know that that's correct because one plus six does equal seven. So let's start by adding our doubles. That's what we always do. Six plus six. 
And hopefully you guys kind of have that answer come to your head a little bit quicker and know that the answer is 12. Six plus six equals 12. We can cross out our sixes because we know that we have already um, used them here. Now we are going to start with our 12s and let's see, what else do we have left to add? All I'm seeing is this one. So let's do 12 plus one equals 13. All right, 13 is the answer. And you guys can see that all we did was just decompose this seven and um, we just added those doubles and we added the one left over. And again, as you guys practice with this method, these will actually, these problems, especially the single digit problems, will come to you so much quicker and you will be able to memorize them a lot quicker as well. So that is just awesome. And we are going to continue on. So now that we have that, we know seven plus six is 13 and we are going to move on. Now, if you guys haven't already, I would love for you to pull out your piece of paper, pull out your whiteboard, um, <clears throat> your tablet, whatever you have, and we will do these together. So our next problem that we are going to do is 20 plus 20, whoops. I accidentally wrote down the wrong thing. 20 plus 28. Awesome. So hopefully you have this written down. So what is the very first step? Go ahead and say it out if you know it. Awesome. I can't hear you guys, but I'm hoping that you said look and see which one is the bigger number. Well, we know that 28 is larger than 20. You would definitely rather have 28 cookies than 20 cookies. So 28 is the bigger number. Now let's decompose this so we can get two 20s. So the way that we do that is just going to do, or it's just going to be 20 and eight. And we know that's correct because 20 plus eight is 28. So this is one way to decompose this um, number. All right, so what is our next step? Say it out if you know it. All right, hopefully you said to add up these doubles. Let's see, 20 plus 20 is 40. Yes, it is 40, awesome job. Let's cross out our 20s so that we know that we've already used them. I'm going to get a different color. All right, so now that we have this 40, what are we going to be adding on to our 40? Eight, yep, the eight, the leftover eight. So let's see, 40 plus eight equals Say it out loud, 48. Awesome job, you guys. Hopefully you guys can see that all we did was just decompose this number. We got our doubles here, which 20 and 20. We had this eight left over, added it on, and we got 48, which I can confirm is the correct answer. So I know that we did a great job on that one. All right, so our next problem, we are going to do two more problems together. Our next problem is 15 plus 10. I'm going to write that on my whiteboard for you guys so you can see it. 15 plus 10. Perfect. Okay, so what is our first step? Our first step is seeing which of these numbers is larger. And we can see that 15 is larger than 10. So let's decompose 15 so we can get doubles for our um, math problem. So the way I'm going to decompose 15 is five and 10. Five and 10. Awesome, now that we have this five and 10, 
We see another 10 up here. So we are going to add up our doubles. So 10 plus 10 equals 20. Yes, 10 and 10 equal 20. Switching the color here. Let's write our 20. And what are we going to add to our 20? What is left over that still needs to um, be a part of this problem? Yes, it is five. Five is the lonely number over here and still needs to be added on. So 20 plus five equals 25. Awesome job, you guys. And yes, 25 is our answer, and we know that 15 plus 10 is, in fact, 25. So we have another correct answer, which is so awesome. You guys are doing an amazing job at this. I'm sure you're catching on quickly. All right, we are going to do one more together before you guys do a little bit of independent practice. So our final problem is 9 plus 8. 9 plus 8. All right, so you guys know the drill. Go ahead and tell me what is our first step. Our first step is to look and see which of these numbers is larger. So we know that 9 is larger than 8. So let's decompose our 9 so that we can get doubles for our addition sentence. So we have 1 and 8. And how we got that is just because we know that 1 plus 8 equals 9. So let's start by just adding up our doubles. I see 8 and 8, so we can add 8 plus 8. And what is 8 plus 8? 16. I'm actually going to write down here in a different color, 16. Awesome, let's go ahead and cross out what we've already used so we don't get confused. Now, what are we going to be adding to our 16? What is the other number that still needs to be included in this um, addition problem? It is one, yes. So 16 plus one is 17. So we know that nine plus eight equals 17. That is our final answer, and that is the correct answer. Um, I saw, I, I um, did the problem before we even did it all together, so I double checked, and I know that 17 is in fact the correct answer. So great job, guys. Um, really just learning how to do this. All right. Now I'm going to share my screen with you because it is your turn. Um, if you guys would like to take a second to pause this video, this is your turn to go ahead and try um, completing these problems. This is your independent practice time. So go ahead and um, pause right here. All right, hopefully you guys paused and we're able to go over um, these problems and finish all of them. But I am gonna go over the answers. I'm not going to work through them just for time's sake, but just so you guys can check if you got them right and keep trying if you did not. Um, the answer to the first one is 52. 52 is the correct answer. And the way you could double that is by 25s. Um, that's how I would double it. So adding 25 plus 25 and then plus two. All right, the second question, the answer is 61. 61, and again, these look a little bit scarier because the numbers are bigger, but really um, they are not bad. What I would do is just decompose the 31, 30, and one, and add those 30s together as doubles, and then add the one, and you get 61. Now, finally, for our last problem, 42 plus 40. Again, I would use that 40 and 40 as our doubles here, and you get 82. Add 40 and 40, and then add our two, and we are at 82.
So those are the answers to the problems. Hopefully you guys got them correct. I'm sure you did. Um, that's just a great way to practice. And I encourage you guys to keep practicing even after uh, you finish this video. So let's just go over our objective so you guys can feel like you reached this objective or maybe you didn't and you would like to watch again and learn some more, that is awesome. So by the end of this lesson, you will be able to use the strategy of making doubles to help simplify addition. Do you all feel like we have reached that objective? I know I do. I feel like even I just learned a lot um, by really working through these problems with you all. All right, so that is it from me. I hope you guys have an awesome day. Keep practicing your um, addition with those doubles and have a great day. Bye-bye.